Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, thank you for attending this webinar today. Uh, my name is Vicky Horsfield, and I'm the category manager within the facilities management buying team at YPO. Sally and I are going to be delivering this webinar today, and I'll pass you over to um, Sally for a quick introduction too. Hi, I'm Sally Pemberton. I am the assistant buyer in SM Services within YPO. You've probably already noticed then, so just for a bit of housekeeping, your microphones have automatically been muted and your videos have been disabled. You, you can ask any questions throughout via the Q&A chat, chat box at the bottom of your screen and we will go through all of these or as many as we can at the end. Any that we can't get through today, we will follow up on afterwards to, to all attendees. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and we will email a copy of that out afterwards also. So I just wanted to start with a bit of an explanation as to why we've created this webinar. Uh, we understand that public sector purchasing or public sector procurement can appear daunting and long-winded. We're wanting to engage more with SMEs or small to medium-sized enterprises and other providers that may not be familiar with public sector procurement or in fact tendering portals. We want to make the process as straightforward as we possibly can and offer access to our DPS agreements to give these providers the opportunity to bid for public sector work. Many organisations don't have their own uh, bid or tendering team. And for those organisations, we want to provide that help in hand. The DPS agreements that we have in place and that will be the focus of our webinar today are suitable for these organisations as a provider can join when they are ready. We will go into more detail on this later. So the points that we are gonna to cover today within this webinar are who are YPO, who are YPO's customers? What is a DPS agreement? What are the benefits to my organisation? How does my organisation apply? What happens after I am successful? Common mistakes, things to remember, and of course the uh, Q&A question and answer session at the end. Just a, a, a tiny bit of a background then, just for those that don't know, um, who are YPO? So YPO are a public sector buying organisation. You may have come across the abbreviation PSBO. We supply products and services to a wide range of customers. We were established back in 1974 by 13 local authorities in order to com combine their buying power and to achieve efficiency savings. You can see the authorities listed there to the right. We are 100% publicly, publicly owned still to this day. And every year we budget to make a small surplus, which is used to develop the business. Everything else is passed back to our public sector customers. We were formerly Yorkshire Purchasing Organisation. Um, many of you may, may know us for our bread and butter, our glue sticks or our, our stationery supplies. However, we rebranded many years ago in an attempt to eliminate the stigma of being for the people of Yorkshire only. We are a national um, based, org we are a national organisation. Our customer base is national and we're available to uh, national providers as well. Our range includes around 30,000 products and 100 frameworks. So who are our customers? We provide products and services to any organisation within the public sector. Local authorities, education, so that's schools, nurseries, universities, colleges and latterly multi-academy trusts. The NHS. <coughs> Excuse me, the emergency services, housing associations, charities, and examples of other public sector organisations that we've assisted are the Canal and River Trust, the Science Museum Group, also known as the National Rail Railway Museum in York, and the Highways Agency. So any public sector organisation. So what is a dynamic purchasing system or a DPS? One of the factors that makes public sector purchasing daunting is the fact that public sector buyers must comply with the public, public contract regulations. YPO creates agreements based on our customer needs, customers' needs, and as a PSBO, we are legally bound to comply with these regulations. This makes our agreements compliant. Our customers then call off, which you may also hear referred to as a call for competition, a mini competition, or a further competition, from our agreements in a timely and efficient manner without, without having to run their own lengthy or full tendering exercise. Again, you may also have heard this referred to as a, an OGU tender. YPO will create and issue a further competition based on the customer's actual requirements. Provi excuse me, providers submit their pricing at this stage. 
Moving on then, a framework is an agreement created with a provider or a range of providers that enables buyers to place orders for goods and services. This is a closed framework. So once the tender process has completed, providers cannot join that agreement until it's expired and it gets renewed. A DPS is not dissimilar. However, new providers can join at any time throughout the lifetime of the DPS agreement. Our DPS agreements are pro proving to be popular to our customer base as many customers require their current or local providers to participate in their, their further competitions. And with this being a DPS, this is possible. What are, what are the benefits to your organisation of applying to our DPS agreements? You only have to complete the standard selection questionnaire once. Once you're fully awarded, you will be automatically invited to bid for opportunities of our customers' requirements within your area of work. There's no, no joining fee for the DPS agreements that we're talking about today. There's just 1% retrospective rebate of winning contract value. So as I've just said, there's no joining fee at all for applying to join. Um, you will only be charged 1% of the uh, contract value if you are successful in winning a contract. It's a transparent and uh, transparent tender and contract process. The further competition documents detail customer requirements plus the clear award criterion. So it's a level playing field for all eligible providers from the get go. It's, you have the opportunity to increase sales and grow your market share. We're con constantly marketing the DPS agreements through the YPO website and other social media platforms, which brings further awareness to not only the DPS, but also each and every one of our providers. For example, you will also be listed as an awarded provider on our website for customers to see. You will also be able to direct your customers to YPO as a compliant route. So you can retain contracts with them whilst they comply with current procurement regulations. We're also committed to supplier relationship management. Our guidance and support is available to all providers if required, just as much as our customers. We have a loyal customer base and it may be beneficial for you to know the reasons why our customers choose to come to YPO. They have the confidence that suppliers have been pre-qualified. They are compliant, financially sound and have appropriate insurance cover. It's a shorter compliant route to market for them and in turn saves them time and money. Due to lack of resources in the public sector, more and more customers are turning to PSBOs for assistance within assistance with their requirements. But it's a, it's a great time for, you, for your new providers to get on board. Right, it's now time to guide you through the steps on how to apply. And I'll pass you on to Sally, who will start with the first step, which is registering for an account on the e-tendering portal. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, hi, everybody. So the first thing um, that we need to do, if you haven't already, is obviously register for an account on Proactive, or sometimes it's called ProContract. Uh, the following simple steps are here to guide you um, into completing your steps. All this, is informa all this information will be emailed out to attendees, uh, just to remind you also, you have access to this link, um, you know, when, when you get started, when, you, when you're ready for um, applying for and registering for your account. Click the link here to access the login page. You will then follow and have two options at this point. So you can either select welcome uh, to ProContract already registered to log into your account, click obviously log into your account then, or if you're new to ProContract, you can then create an account. Depending on your choice, follow the on-screen guidance from this uh, point and complete the vendor profile. It is a benefit to yourselves um, if you complete this in full at this point, but please do not confuse this with your actual DPS application. There is a similar amount of questions here in the vendor profile that is available when you start applying onto the DPSs. Again, this registration is free of charge for you to complete. Once completed, Proactus will then verify your account registration and you will be sent an email to confirm your account registration success. It may be good to note at this point, not only YPO use this portal, so you will also have access to other arms of Proactus, such as the chest or your tender, by registering for a Proactus account. YPO use the Due North arm of this um, portal. You can select your preferred opportunity areas of interest at this point, and if you will have the and you will have the chance to amend or update these at a later stage if you decide um, of different interests or you need to amend any selections. 
This is a bit of an obvious point, uh, but you may be surprised that some providers don't do this. So please do remember to you know, keep a note of your login details as you will need these every time that you log into your account. We have also added information of uh, proactive detail, um, details of proactive uh, support if you're struggling um, with your account um, system uh, supplier that's uh, pro contract suppliers at proactive.com or alternatively through the supplier portal um, when you log on to your account, you do actually see um, there's an, an option for you to click if you're struggling and contact Proactive directly yourself. Uh, next slide, please, Vicky. So now you've registered for an account, uh, what you need to do is to search for your opportunity. For this, opportun uh, for this example, we have chosen to use our new 880 building in use, uh, building in, excuse me, building envelope as examples. Uh, this is our newest agreement. Next slide, please, Vicky. Once logged into your new account, the screenshot to the left will be your home page, which is what you will view every time you log in to your account. We will be demonstrating places to click in order to complete such tasks in the following slides. So I've highlighted the specific points that you'll need to click. So please do make sure to catch the red circled sections on our slides, just to make it easier for you. In the search bar across the top, type your DPS agreement that you wish to apply for and click go. You just need to go back a slide, Vicky, please. I think, I think I did do, Sally. I think I've just come back. Oh, my apologies. <coughs> we have listed these DPS agreements that we are speaking about today, but please do note that YPOFM services do have other DPS agreements available, as does procurement services, a wider team. So please check out the YPO website for our framework agreements and DPSs. So you've searched and clicked go. So now you need to just search for your agreement uh, the search for agreement will be shown in the available options. Click the blue DPS agreement title of your choosing and follow your, uh, to follow your search. That was quite simple. The next step, uh, the next part to your registration is to register your interest in the choice um, uh, of your DPS. Once you Thank you, Vicky. Once you have selected your opportunity, click the green register interest in this opportunity box. From this point on, you will have two choices. Next slide, please, Vicky. Thank you. Uh, this pop-up will appear when you have clicked register your interest. So you can either click here, which will allow you to begin answering your question straight away. We will cover this in a minute though. Or click close. If you cannot commit to starting your response right away, you can exit here and continue with your application another day or when you are ready to do so. Next slide, please, Vicky. Thank you. Presuming you were busy the day you registered for your account uh, and all you could manage was to search for your DPS opportunity, but you have now returned fresh faced and ready to take on the world, you can pick up where you left off by logging back into your account from the home page, click on recently added. This also applies if you are, you know, if you happen to be part way through your application, uh, but had to leave the, leave it for a while, or if the system has timed you out, which it does quite often. So don't panic. You can easily access where you left off, but have a, uh, but as a, excuse me, but as a good rule of thumb, it's best to make sure you save your work wherever possible in case the system does time, time you out. But if it does, just simply click on recently added on the home page. Here, it will list all the DPS agreements you have clicked an interest in. Click the DPS that you wish to continue your application with. Again, we've selected 880 building envelope. Once clicked, click on open to begin your application and start answering your question sets. Everybody on board so far? We have tried to make this webinar a simple uh, to follow as possible. But as Vicky mentioned at the beginning, if you have any questions, please do write them in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end. As referenced earlier that we would continue to this section later, from clicking here to begin answering your questions, 
this is the page you would get to next if you were lucky enough to have some free time and did click here. Once you have selected here, or if you log back in fresh faced, you can begin to answer your questions and your application. So all you'll need to do from this page is click start my response. Now that you have begun your application, click edit at the side of each question set. This allows you to respond to all questions in this section. It's important to know within the SQ, please make sure to read the establishment terms and conditions at this stage. If you are successfully awarded, we will ask you to sign the DPS establishment terms and conditions. And if you cannot or do not agree to the terms and conditions, you might be wasting your time in applying for the DPS agreement as you will not be added onto the framework step with YPO being in receipt of your signed terms and conditions. As you continue your way through the question sets, make sure to click answer question and respond to all questions thoroughly. So it will take so it will turn your checkpoint list from red to green. Please also make sure that you respond fully and upload any necessary attachments as part of your application. Then click back once completed. This allows you to access to move on to the next question set. Congratulations. You've answered all your questions from the categories that you are interested in. Now that you have answered all your question sets, please make sure to opt out of any category that you do not wish to apply for and that you have completed the SQ and any mandatory questions where applicable. Noting though, not every DPS agreement will be will have the same terms of the response required. So please make sure to check everything and to make sure that you've checked all your questions and that you've answered everything completely. You will be able to submit your response when the checklist is fully green. You will be able to complete this step if you have my apologies, you will not be able to collect this, complete this step if you have not completed all of the required sections. We have noticed that some providers do seem to slip up at this point, so please be aware that it is usually the additional information section that captures providers out. Click edit at the additional information section along the top. And all you need to do here, thank you Vicky, and all you need to do here is select the checkbox and click save. It is as simple as that. You will note now that the checklist points have all gone green and that submit response is now available. Click here to submit your response. If this is successful, Proactive ProContract will send you a confirmation email and YPO will receive a notification that an application has been submitted. Please do understand though that YPO will not know at this point who has submitted an application until we close down the round in order to evaluate application submissions. Great job so far. Next slide, please, Vicky, sorry. Great job so far, guys. You may ask though, what happens after I am successful? So once you have submitted, submitted your application, hang on a second. So once you have submitted your application, is a short project of what will happen next. Once we APO have completed the evaluation process, we will issue you with a successful, all successful applicants with an acceptance letter and your DPS establishment, establishment terms and conditions as mentioned. Just note though, if you are unsuccessful at this point, there's no need to fret. You can reapply on the DPS any round throughout the lifetime of the DPS agreement. Always please make sure you return your signed DPS establishment terms and conditions by the commencement date on your acceptance letter. Otherwise, YPO cannot add you onto the DPS agreement and you will not start to receive automatic invitations for our customer opportunities. Please also ensure you return copies of your insurance certificates as well, along with your signed pages for our records. Now that you are successful, you do not need to reapply onto the DPS after this point, but do make sure you read all of your notifications you receive from ProContract, as some messages may be important. Do not ignore your notifications. Once YPO have added you onto the DPS, you will be notified by email or ProContract notifications that you have been invited to complete, compete in our customer further competitions. Click the link in the email you receive to be able to view the opportunities. If you can obviously then service the contract, please make sure to express your interest. 
If you cannot service this contract, it is expected that providers opt out. Complete your submission or quote as required by the customer in the further competition documents and upload by the end of the response by deadline shown in the further competition documents. If you do need to raise any clarifications about the customer requirements, please make sure that these are raised in the discussion tab or the message centre of that particular project and not directly with the DPS agreement. If you are successful in the further competition, meaning that you have won the contract, you will be entered into a legally binding contract with the customer outside of your agreement with YPO. Now that we've gone through that next slide, please, Vicky, sorry. So I just wanted to point out a few common mistakes uh, that providers, or we've noticed that providers do, uh, do make. Please make sure you open and read all of the attachments prior to completing your application. This includes the tender particulars and the DPS terms and conditions in the SQ. Leaving questions blank or not providing sufficient information such as uploading attachments that YPO are asking for, for example, on 881 grounds maintenance services and associated, and associated services, sorry, uploading terms and conditions may mean that your application is rejected. As mentioned, please do read all of your notifications. These include all notifications such as DPS notifications, for example, when the round closes down, you need to read the sent messages to advise of this stage. Clarifications as part of your evaluation, please make sure you read these as, delay, as this could delay the process by you not replying if you do receive any clarifications about your application. Further competition notifications, as mentioned, it is your responsibility to keep notice of these. So do make sure you do not miss out on customer opportunities when after you are successful. And again, as mentioned above, reading notification so you do not reapply to any unnecessary future rounds. A notification is always issued as a respond by dates change. So make sure you are aware of the stage you are at with your application. As an example, if you are part way through your application, you can pick this up again when a new round automatically opens. If you've applied and awaiting award notification, do not reapply. Just know that YPO are in the middle of evaluating your application. If you've been successfully awarded a place on any DPS, you do not need to reapply. This only delays the process. So again, please read all of your notifications very carefully and do not dismiss any as junk. We are aware that you will receive a lot, lots of notifications and not only from YPO via the portal, but please do make sure to read them all carefully. And finally, by YPO not receiving your signed terms and conditions by the commencement date in your award letter, only delays you from being fully awarded a place on the DPS and therefore you will miss out on customer opportunities. YPO cannot add you onto the framework step without being in receipt of your signed documents and copies of your insurance certificates. Sorry Vicky, I think I jumped that slide and uh, you'll come on to answer it, so uh, apologies. Um, I don't know if you want to read this slide. <laughs> You're okay Sally, thank you. <laughs> um, so just in summary then, a few things to remember. Uh, don't panic. Um, when a round closes, if you haven't completed your submission, uh, your responses will automatically be carried forward onto the next round. Again, don't panic if you have already submitted an application in a, in a previous round. You don't need to do it again if you haven't failed. If you were successful, you do remain um, on that DPS un un until the expiry of it. If you do fail, however, as, how, as Sally has mentioned previously, you can always reapply. Um, please note uh, sorry, I know we keep saying to read all notifications, but it is imperative, as Sally's mentioned already, that you do read all notifications carefully as you may miss out on important information, clarifications or customer opportunities. Some may have deadlines, so do not miss those. Please note as well that registering for an account on Proactis does not automatically mean you are on the YPO DPS. You still need to apply onto these and be evaluated like all other providers. It may be, may be worth us mentioning here that Proactis or ProContract is not the YPO portal. We are just a licensed user of the portal, so do not have control over the system's issues or account queries. It is your responsibility to, to, to keep your Proactis contact details up to date. If they aren't up to date, you won't receive notification of the opportunities. The appropriate person needs adding to your workgroup contact so you do not miss any notifications. You can add more than one contact email.
it is particularly a problem if people leave the organisation. And finally, um, again, please make sure to read the DPS establishment terms and conditions. These are preset terms and conditions already signed off by providers already on the DPS agreement, so we cannot change them. If you can't find the uh, terms and conditions, we cannot place you on the agreement as a successful provider. It would save both you and YPO time by ensuring that your organisation can find these prior to completing your application. Right, there are some um, contact details there. If you do want to follow up with any of us afterwards, that's the full um, the full contact detail for uh, our team, the facilities management buying team. Um, we are going to move on now to the question and answer session. And if don't worry about copying those details down because we will email this out to you afterwards. I'll just stop sharing the screen now so we can move on to the um, question and answer question and answer session. Right, so we have just had um, a few questions come through. Um, one of those is, when do, I, uh, when do I submit my pricing? So no pricing is, needs to be submitted upon application to the DPS. The pricing is requested once a customer has a requirement. Um, so you're successfully on the DPS, you've um, gone through all the application process, you're successfully on the DPS, you then wait for notifications of customer opportunities. That's when, um, You'll receive a notification of a customer opportunity and we will ask you for your pricing at that point. Um, another question, uh, do I have to apply to all lots or all categories? Um, so you, this person said that they're a, a provider wanting to apply onto the um, 879 building and new support services DPS and they also they do waste management and also cleaning but their area is, is just cleaning. So do they do they just apply to the cleaning category? But my answer to that would be um, if you can, if your organisation can provide um, more than one category of work, so they can do cleaning and they can do waste management, then select, select both upon the application. Reason being, if the cleaning part of your organisation then, for example, wants to use the uh, DPS to supply customers at a later date, they would have to reapply if their category wasn't selected on the outset. On the outset so it's imperative that you select both categories initially to say save having to reapply at, at a later point. Um, another question um, I think there is it my responsibility to update my contacts on the uh, on the tendering portal? Yep as, as we've just mentioned in the previous slide we aren't um, the owners of the portal. YPO and many other organisations use that portal um, we are just licensed users of it, so it is a, the, the provider's responsibility to keep those contact details up to date. Um, what do you mean by a new round? What, what do you mean by keep mention, mentioning new rounds? Um, Sally, would you like to an answer that one? Oh, Sally, you're on mute, sorry. My apologies, my apologies. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Um, with the DPS being different, slightly different, I should say, to a framework agreement, um, as in providers can onboard at any point throughout the lifetime of the DPS agreement, YPO and any other public sector buying an organisation with DPSs do actually need to close uh, what is called a round down, so then we can evaluate uh, any applications that we've got. So it essentially is whatever part is open at that time, that round closes down when we set it to close, a new one automatically opens so new providers then can start applying in the new rounds while we evaluate any application submissions that are in the previous round. Rounds open and close all the time um, and will continue to do so throughout the lifetime of the DPS as I've said. Um, so yeah, it, it just is literally the way that YPO can evaluate applications and then suppliers can apply on new rounds. <coughs> Thank you, Sally. Right, we, we do have um, uh, another question. Uh, what steps are taken by you to encourage use of your frameworks? We have seen many public bodies on frameworks, but not using them. Um, thanks for this today, very helpful. That's great, thank you. Um, so what steps do we take to encourage use of our frameworks? So we do have a, a marketing team that are dedicated to um, advertising our frameworks uh, via social media platforms, 
via newsletters through different means um, on, uh, and on our website as well. We also do uh, many events like this. Um, and we are also, uh, uh, two of our DPS agreements are recommended by the Department for Education. So the Department for Education also assist in directing their education customers um, in sending them our way, our way to. We've also got a dedica dedicated education procurement team that can provide that extra helping hand for our education customers. Um, and it, it, a lot of it is as well, um, once we've got a customer that uses us for, for one requirement, they do tend to come back because we do provide that excellent customer service. Um, these DPS agreements are very busy. Um, we do receive inquiries and opportunities going through them uh, daily uh, and weekly. And obviously we're happy to um, give, give more information on that at any point afterwards as well. Um, how long can a, a round last? I'll let you answer that one, Sally, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Uh, am I on mute again or am I unmuted? Yeah, you're unmuted. <laughs> that's okay. I'm sure it just said uh, click to unmute. Mm -hmm. uh, so around, it literally just depends on uh, what applications it is that we've got from providers. With the procurement public contract regulations 2015, procurement regulations, regulations stipulate that we have 10 days um, 10 calendar days as well to evaluate providers applications that we receive on that round um, so we do actually have the 10 days to do it one round closes usually within 10 days sometimes it it, it does slip unfortunately um, but we try and stick it as closely to 10 days as possible um, we will close a round down when we get a couple of applications if we get no applications for a good few weeks that round will just stay open until we get one application we get one application, two applications, three applications. We set the round to close down. So it really just depends on when we receive uh, providers' applications in, if to when we actually close down the round. So it's quite difficult to say, um, but once we get an application, we do have 10 days that we've got to work on. So within them 10 days, we will close the round down, evaluate, and then um, obviously the new round opens up and then it just repeats the process after that. It's continuously open, isn't it, basically? The, the round. Yeah, basically. Yeah, so, so as soon as one closes, another one opens. If you've not managed to get on that previous round, we just have to close down the round to, yeah. to enable us to, to open an application and, and evaluate it. Um, we have got another, another uh, message saying that we've just missed the last date. When can we um, apply again? Um, I think that's probably been answered with the, Sally's question in that um, you will, once we close the round down, you will receive a notification stating that the, the end date, um, has, the respond date has changed. However, you can still continue to um, complete your application and then just submit on the next round, which, which can literally be a few minutes after that, that round is closed. It, it's continuous. Um, do you have a pipeline of future YPO DPSs that are scheduled to open? We do have a contracts register that is um, available on our website and that shows all current sorry current frameworks and DPS agreements and also any DPS agreements that are in the pipeline um, along with all, all frameworks that are in the pipeline we can um, we, what we can do is uh, email that around to uh, all attendees afterwards as well no problem um, any more questions so if we got sent we've got sent a couple previously I'll see if there's any we've not answered. Um, no, I don't think so at this minute. Um, what I will say though is obviously we're, we're always here. Um, if you know if the if the uh, application process does seem daunting, if you've got any questions whatsoever, as I said, we're going to send these slides out. You can use those for guidance, reference. Um, there's our contact details on there. Please contact Sally um, or myself or or any other members of the team at any time, and we will assist you with the process. Um, it does often seem more complicated than it is, but once you're on there. You are on there for the, uh, the full life, full life of the DP DPS agreement. Also, um, it's your choice as well. Once customer opportunities start to come through, it's your choice as to whether, um, as to which opportunities you decide to participate in. Um, you won't be penalised at all if you know for cherry picking those. You you cherry pick um, as you see fit. Um, if something's within your area, if you you've got the resources and, and the time to bid for an opportunity, then that's absolutely fine. You, you can ignore the others. That that's totally fine. 
Uh, just to note there, though, on top, Vicky, if you do choose to um, not participate in that opportunity, to opt out of that opportunity, and then we have a list of providers that have opted out, it's just better for the customer then um, if we've got a list of providers that have actually opted out. Um, sorry, we do have a question. Have you published public sector spend so far that has gone through each YPO DPS agreement? Um, I'm not sure if we have, to be honest. Um, but that is some information that we can follow up with afterwards also, no problem. Um, uh, another, this is a good question, actually, something we've not touched on. Is there a maximum stroke minimum amount of contractors? Sally, would you like to uh, answer that one? Or? Yeah, I can do. Um, there is no minimum or maximum amount of providers um, on the DPS. Um, I look after two DPSs currently at the moment, and one has got circa 170 providers on it across all lots. And another one has 50 something providers on it across all categories. Um, as it is a DPS, you know, we do onboard providers all the time, large and small. So, no, um, to answer the question, there is no minimum or maximum uh, amount of providers or contractors that we can accept onto a DPS. Yep, as per the, the regulations, we're not allowed to limit, um, limit the, the number of providers that, that we allow on there. So, it is, it is open, open equally to, to every provider. Um, and just so that's not, you know, off put in, um, we don't, we're very often, um, the, the average number of bids for a, a customer opportunity is about four or five, isn't it, Sally? Um, yeah. We don't get the full 170 suppliers bidding for each, each opportunity. Um, right, another question, how do you process the 1% charge for a successful contractor? Is this for all works that are won through the DPSs? So the DPS agreements that we've spoke about today, um, the building and new support services, the building envelope, the... Um, internal fit out and maintenance and the grams maintenance services they are they're all a one percent charge for successful contracts so basically what would happen once you've bid and won a contract with a customer by the uh, by the dps um once you've had your your first month's worth of, uh, of spend through that contract you would then report that spend to ipo again we'd assist you through that process so you'd report that spend to ipo and then we'd then invoice you quarterly for that 1% of, of that spend. So I hope that answers that question. But again, um, the first step is getting on the uh, getting on the system, and then we, we guide you through all that as well afterwards. I'll just wait to see if there's an, ah, sorry. Um, are there any mandates for government to use YPO DPSs? Uh, no, there aren't any mandates for, for the government to use, to use our, our DPSs, no. I'll just wait a, a minute or so, Sally, just to see if any, any more um, questions. Yeah, come sure. Through. Just make sure we've answered them all. Um, but again, if you've got any questions that you think of after the uh, after the webinar anyway, please feel free to, to email any of us. Yeah, you might maybe find that you've got some questions, you know, when you receive the slides and um, of the webinar presentation, you know, you might have a few afterwards when you've digested it again yourself. So again, if you do have any, um, you know, our contact details are on there, please do contact us. Yeah, I think we might have finished then. So I um, just want to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. And we hope to hear from you all um, at some point in the future. That would be great. And obviously, we would, we'd love to see some of your applications come through. Thank you. Thank you. And bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.